Essex, a helping hand with your land. Hello, my name is Eddie. Work here in the service department at Essex. Today we're going to go over some service and maintenance practices on an SSV 75. Uh, this is a brand new machine, pilot controls. Uh, we're going to go over how to tilt the cab, uh, how to change the oil, where all the filters are, fuel tank, and all of that good stuff. So first thing we're going to do, tilt the cab. Cabs are held down with two bolts in the front, just like the uh, predecessor, the SVL. So you pull these two, cab two, these two bolts out. We'll place them down inside for safe storage. All we gotta do is climb up on here and give the cab a big push. It's got gas struts to help us along the way. Once the cab's all the way up, it does have a safety feature built in. You always wanna make sure the safety's on. All right, so now that we have our cab up in the air, what can we see, what can we do? First we got, you can see the back of the engine. This is your DPF. Uh, these replace your mufflers now that we're on tier four. So this would have been old school, this would have been your muffler. Tier fours, they have a DPF. Moving down, these are your drive pumps, drive transmissions. On to the end of the stack, you've got your hydraulic pump. This is what allows your boom and bucket. This is what makes the pressure for your boom and bucket controls. Uh, drive motors would be on either side. In this machine, they're painted yellow. Uh, and then all the way up underneath where you probably can't see is the control valve. That is what actually allows your boom and bucket to go up and down. The only other thing that you would want to maintenance or have to do for maintenance underneath here is there's a hydraulic oil filter right here. So you would, if you need to change that filter, you got to lift your cab for that. So to gain access to the back of the engine where the fan is and that kind of stuff, all the rest of your filters, we got to get inside the rear door. We're just going to open that up. One of the new things that a lot of people are talking about is the fuel tank is located on the rear door. Uh, they have built this door heavy enough to withstand an impact fuel tank. Uh, we have the coolant reservoir right here and if you move down along we've got your fuel water separator this can be taken off and cleaned put back on uh, you'll want to check this periodically to make sure that if you've got water in there that you drain it out next to that is your fuel filter uh, again with these with the new fuels tier 4 engines you're going to want to change these more often consult your operators manual for the intervals uh, down below and just back from that we have the hydraulic filter if we come across the front of the engine underneath this panel would be your drive belt you can see a little bit of it here this is how you check the adjustment also your engine oil filter if we move up along we've got the battery they have the positive clamp in the back so that you could, uh, if you need to jump start it, you hook up your jump starts there and find a good ground. Uh, just above that yellow button, that's your engine oil dipstick. Check your oil level. Uh, if you have drained it out, you need to put oil in it. Again, yellow cap, that's your engine oil fill. So the other thing we've got to look at here is if you notice there's no radiator, there's no AC condenser. All of that stuff appears to be missing. Kubota went ahead and put all of that stuff up here in the top. Slide this out. Stand that up out of the way. Here's your AC condenser. Underneath it is your radiator, oil cooler. These have two little spring clips on them. We can lift this up. It has a little lock. We can now wash this off. We can wash off the radiator, the oil cooler. Uh, all of that stuff will then run down underneath here. There's a panel. We can unscrew this thumb screw. This will then drop down. We can open this up. 
This allows us in access to our fan. Let me grab my flashlight. Allows access to the fan so that we can make sure that there's no debris laying down inside there. We can wash all that out. So one of the things Kubota did is they put a sticker here on the back of the boom. This is the left hand rear of the machine on the boom. And what this sticker says is it gives you all of your grease points. It gives you all of your filter locations uh, and the intervals at which they should be done at. So again, consult your operator's manual, but if you're in the field using it, and you, you can always come back here and if the sticker's still intact, have an idea on what you, when you should be servicing anything. So from here, we're gonna walk up. This unit has chain case oil, chain cases for your drives. So this is your fill plug. This would be your check plug. You should check these periodically, make sure that the oil level's still in there. Uh, if you would need to drain that, Kubota put drain plugs up here in the very front. There's one on either side all the way down in the corner. Keeps them from leaking. They got a brass uh, O-ring in there, keeps them from leaking. Again, check your intervals, but if you need to drain them out, there's your drain plug. One on either side. So the last thing you always want to do is you always want to grease your machine. Uh, grease is what keeps these machines running, keeps the dirt out of where they're supposed to be. We'll go over one side of this machine. They are uh, symmetrical, so the other side will be exactly the same. First one we're going to touch on is down here on the mounting plate. This grease jerk is what, a, what keeps your pins moving up and down, which holds your bucket on. From here, we'll go to the outside. You got your lower bucket cylinder pin, your upper cylinder pin, and we'll move back the boom. Your first pivot point. Go to the other side of that linkage right there would be a grease zerk. Go to your upper boom cylinder pin. Follow that down to your lower boom cylinder pin. Come back up to your linkage. And then follow that to the other end and that would be your last pin on this side. You wanna put enough grease in there that you see grease coming out. It doesn't need to be uh, blobs of grease. You just need to have enough grease in there that everything keeps working properly. So now we're ready. We've got our oil and everything back into our unit. We need to put the cap down. In order to do that, we'll need to crawl up. We have to release the handle and pull down gently. We'll pull our cap down. Put our bolts back in. Tighten those up. we would be ready to start our machine and put it back into the field. Last thing we want to go over, serial number plates. Kubota puts their serial number plates right on the front of the cab. You'll get your model number, your serial number, and your engine number. Again, these are very useful. If you're calling in looking for parts, having your serial number handy, uh, as Kubota uses serial numbers for all of their machines when you search out for parts. So now that we have our cab down, if you have an enclosed cab, you'll have an air filter outside held in with thumb screws. Uh, there will also be a recirculation filter on the inside. This is located on the left hand side of the seat. Again, held in with a thumb screw. And then directly below that is your windshield washer fluid reservoir. Uh, so you'll want to keep an eye on how much fluid is in that. It's also a very good practice whenever you change any of your filters or your oil to uh, record the date and engine hours on the filter. Uh, so after you're all set done, you got your cab back down, you can turn your key on, get your engine hours, and then write that on all of the filters that you've just replaced. That way you always know going into the future when the, when the filter got replaced and when you should replace it again. So that was the service and maintenance tips on a Kubota SSV75. Uh, remember, if you have any questions, you can uh, 
Look us up online at messix.com. Give us a call at 1-800-222-3373 or stop by any one of our stores.